so many people want to use the scriptures to contradict the word that's what they do so they will read for you romans chapter 6 verse 9 are you now saying when you hear people start saying are you now saying they are mischievous there's mischief they are not honest are you now saying and they read it and after they read it they now say are you now saying is it me that is saying oh we read it together we read the thing together are you now saying with their religious voice and with their pious look trying to look like they are holier than jesus are you now saying meanwhile the only thing that makes them think they are holy is because they have not stolen somebody's property but as they are moving like that they have bitterness and envy and competition and jealousy inside are you now saying selective morality if thou shalt count iniquity who can stand but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared jesus is made unto us righteousness and sanctification oh somebody shout glory god made him sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in christ elbow your neighbor say i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus by faith shout glory Are you now saying Romans chapter 6 verse 1 <laughs> Religion is in trouble in my hand What shall we say then? Let me read it for you the way they used to read it Even the Bible says What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin That grace may abound Is that what is written there? What is written there? Shall we continue in sin? There is a difference between in and to. Didn't you read English? Even if you didn't, can't you hear they don't sound alike? Shall we continue in sin? Now, to be able to understand chapter 6, we must go back to chapter 5. So chapter 5 from verse 15 and follow the reading. Jesus kept saying, have you not read? Have you not read? Every time they ask him a stupid question, he will ask them, have you not read? That means if you read, there are questions you will not ask. There are questions you will not use to expose your illiteracy. If you can just read carefully. So let's read. But not as the offense, so also is a free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But we are seen abounded grace did much more abound so the cure for sin is grace because where there is plenty of sin what god uses to cure it is to put plenty of grace what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound is a rhetorical question every time brother paul uses a rhetorical question he asks the question and answers it himself in the same context. Look, that means after the question, you will see the answer. So he's asking a question that has an answer. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? He asked the question and he answered. He said it's impossible. It's impossible. You cannot receive the grace of God and continue in your state of sin. The receiving of the grace of God changes you into a brand new man. He is not talking about conduct here at all. He already told you, we are sin abound. Grace must. So he's not dealing with conduct. He's dealing with your state. Your state. What he means is, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What he's saying is, are you saying that what Jesus did, did not change us at all? Are you saying that what Jesus did, did not change us at all? To continue in sin means, you were not regenerated but if any man be in christ 
He's a new creature. That's why Brother Paul said, God forbid. Let's look at the word continue. It is the word meno, M-E-N-O, meno in the Greek. That is, shall we remain in sin? Shall we abide in sin? Despite what God has done in Christ? Shall we remain in sin? Shall we abide in sin? Despite what God has done in Christ? Did anything happen to us? So Paul applies a word menor. But actually, the word brother Paul uses there is epi menor. E-P-I menor. You don't use epi menor for conduct. Epi menor means we were in sin when Jesus came and died. Then he now says, are we going to persist in sin after Jesus has died? He says, no. No, God forbid. Impossible. In Christ, we are no longer in sin. So we do not continue in sin. That's what, so when he says, shall we continue in sin? He's not dealing with conduct. He's dealing with our state. So he's not dealing with conduct. He's dealing with nature. The work of God. The nature of the man. So the continuing is a position. Not a series of action. Shall we continue in sin? And yet grace is abounding towards us. That is... Did this grace change us at all? What? When you receive the abundance of grace, you are no more in sin. You are free from sin. You are free from sin. So remember, every time you see a rhetorical question in the Bible, if you look closely there, there is an answer. So let us see the answer that brother Paul gave. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein dinomai we no longer exist the way we existed before we are dead to sin it's not a conduct it's nature so he answers the question himself then look at verse 3 know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into jesus christ we are baptized into his death so dying to sin is not a conduct it's identification so who died to sin jesus jesus died to sin how did we die to sin by faith in jesus who died to sin my faith in christ attributed his benefit to my account it's called identification know ye not that his death is ours so when i say i am dead to sin i am claiming my inheritance i am dead to sin i thought somebody would shout that very loud how shall we that are dead to sin exist in it any longer listen the word exist means away it's like saying professor Upman died and professor Upman was buried but on monday after he was buried two weeks ago he appeared in sociology class to give a lecture is it possible professor Upman died and was buried it's over he can never appear in sociology class so it's like saying we died to sin but they saw us alive with sin how is that possible so that's why brother paul said god forbid that word means impact god forbid there is not god forbid god forbid uh -uh. god forbid is bible word for impossible you can't die to sin and be alive to sin it cannot happen you died to sin when christ entered you you are now a new man knowing this touch your neighbor say you have to know it knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin that is our state look at verse 7 for he that is dead 
is freed from sin. Are you dead? You are free from sin. Verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Verse 9. Knowing that Christ be raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So we die to sin and we are alive to God. Follow this. 11. Likewise, this is where many people have problem, bottleneck. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Christ died to sin. How many times? Once. We died to sin. How many times? Once. Watch the next verse. For when you wear, past tense, when you wear the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit are did then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, now, power city, now, be made free from sin and become servants of God. You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Honey, watch the way he... I love brother Paul. That guy had a sunesis. Look at the way he concluded the entire communication. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So if you are in sin, you are dead. But if you are in God, you have eternal life. So all the discourse was about the man in Christ and the man not in Christ. It has nothing to do with conduct. The entire chapter 6 of Romans is about the man in Christ and the man not in Christ. And the man in Christ is the outcome of the father's work. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. The man in Christ is the outcome of the father's work. He's not teaching conduct. He's not teaching conduct. He's showing you your realities in the finished work of Christ. Sin shall no longer no longer have dominion over you you and sin are eternally separated from each other you are now the righteousness of god in christ and you bear fruit unto righteousness i thought somebody would shout hallelujah can i hear your hallelujah can stand on your feet glory to god <laughs> Woo! Woo! lift your right hand and say with me i am a product of the father's work i'm a member of god's family i am righteous i'm dead to sin i'm alive to god sin has no power over me i died to sin. i'm a slave of righteousness sin is my slave i am a slave of righteousness sin shall no longer have dominion over me the grace of god has abounded in my life i win over the devil and his cohort i reign in righteousness i thought i would hear powerful amen said me very loud the word of god said very loud the word of god shout it let every wizard hear you the word of god is final authority in my life the word of god is final authority in my life i am what the word says i am I live my life by the word of God I didn't hear powerful amen it's important for you to come to that realization where the word of God becomes final authority in your life anybody bringing a fly-by-night vision to you rebuke him in Jesus name telling you and your vision are rebuked I am in Christ Christ is in me and where I am only life reigns where I am only righteousness reigns somebody is not shouting a powerful amen greater days ahead of you lift your right hands and let your amen be coming like thunder